Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to speed up your wonders using Fox Wonder Farms. Let's dive in. So here I have a scene in Houdini and you can see I have two different shots. So I have the shot number one and shot number two. And for these two shots, I use two camera resolutions. So I use the 16 by 9 ratio and the 9 by 16 ratio. So by using Fox on the Farm, I can render everything in one time. So this is very, very fast. But first, before sending the scenes on Fox on the Farm, make sure that you have everything correctly linked on the same folder. So you can see for now, I have my folder here and I have backup cache and the scenes. So for this specific scene, it's quite simple. I don't have any Geometry. I have only one texture and the texture is on the RS light dome here. You can see for now the pass look like this and make sure that you have every pass on the dollar hip. So you can create a folder here on your dollar hip. So you can create a folder for the texture. So you can create a text folder and geo folder and you can relink everything manually. But if you want to make it really faster, we have a little tool to save every asset from the scenes, including geometry, texture and so on. And it will save everything to the dollar hip, create the folder for you. And in one single click, you can save everything and everything will be perfectly linked. So this is perfect to use around the farm. So if you want, you can download the tool in the descriptions. So here I have my little tool and it's called save asset. So you can save the geometry and you can save the texture. In my case, I don't have any geometry for this scene because this is really, really simple scenes. So I will save only the texture. So I have my HDRI maps and I have a little bokeh maps for the camera. So I will click on this option to save the textures to dollar hip. And uh, if you want, you can create some subfolder. Maybe it can be a good option if you have multiple textures. But in my case, I have a very simple scene. So I will don't enable this option and I can click on save assets. And now you can see on my project folder, it will create automatically a texture folder. And you can see that I have my texture here, bokeh maps and my HDRI maps. And now you can see on the DOM, we have the texture correctly linked on the dollar hip and text folder. So this is really, really important step before using Fox on the farm, because if you have some local assets on another drive it will uh, miss some textures light and so on and you will get very different results on the final output so make sure you have every asset correctly linked on the scenes and now once everything is correctly linked textures geometry and so on we can go to the out context and here you can see i have my redshift drops and here i've added a one redshift drop per camera so here i have the first one uh, with the correct render settings so i have my redshift render settings here the uh, frame range for the render and i've set this first redshift drop for the first cameras then I copy and paste it and just change the camera pass. So I've set the second one for the camera number two, copy and paste it, just set the camera number three for this one and copy and paste it and set the camera number four. So don't forget to change the frame range if you have different frame range between the different cameras. And when it's done, you can just click on file, save, save your files, and then we can import the folder on Fox Under Farms. So this is the main page of Fox Under Farms and you can see that you have your balance here. And you can also choose from GPU and CPU. So CPU is good if you want to make your cache on Fox on the Farm. But in our case, we want to make the rendering of the scene. So we will use a GPU. So sometimes some GPUs can be a bit buzzy. So you can just check if it's buzzy or not. But if it's buzzy, you can just switch from region one or region two. So in our case, uh, it's not buzzy today. So you can just keep on region ones. And here you have the different steps that you need to make. First, you have to upload your assets. Then you have to submit the scenes on the farm. Then it will analyze your scenes and then you can just start the rendering. And at the end, you can download the frame from the farm. So let's go to the first step, which is the assets. So here you can click on upload now. And in that case, you can upload your entire folder into the farm. So click on that. So in my case, I will import everything to the farms. So the scenes, texture folder, cache and backup. So I will click on that and I will click on this one and click on OK. And now you can see it will import the entire folder to the scene. So the entire folder is about two gigs. So it's quite light for this one, but sometimes it's a bit bigger and it will take a bit more time. So the time will depend on your internet speed. So now my folder incorrectly import on the farm. So I can close this one and now I can go into the step number two, which is submit. So I can click on that. So here I have to choose the software I use. So in my case, it's Houdini. And then I can just select the scene. So I can click on that and that and that. And here is my scenes. So I can select the scenes, click on next config render softwares. So here you need to set your software version. So you can click on add software configs and here you can give a name. So this is just for you. So you can name it something like Houdini 20.5. So here in my case, I use Houdini 20.5, but of course you have to choose your Houdini versions. And here you can just choose the plugin you are using. In my case, I use Redshift, so I can select Redshift. And the version I use is this one, so I can click on add. 
And now I can click on confirm and I can choose this config for this render. So here you can also choose your GPU model. So if your scene is quite huge, you can maybe disable these two first. But in my case, as the scene is quite light, I will keep everything enabled. So here, if you want, you can increase the RAM. But in my case, I will keep it on this one. And if you increase the RAM, it will cost a bit more. So now I can click on go analysis. So now you can see that the scene is currently analyzing. So we just need to wait. Sometimes we need to wait around two or three minutes. And then when it's done, you can send the scenes to the rendering. So the analysis process is done on about four minutes. And you can see that we have a little warning here. So for the Houdini scenes, we always have a little warning. So this is a warning to make sure everything is correctly linked, including texture, cache, and uh, geometry. So in our case, everything is correctly linked. So I can click on Ignore and Continue. And here you can select the redshift output you want to render. So in my case, I have four because I have four cameras. So I have shot one, camera one, shot two, camera two, shot one, camera three, and shot two, camera four with the different resolutions. So here, if you want to render only some of them, you can just tick them. And here you can also make some test frame for the rendering before sending everything to the farm. So you can tick first frame, mid frame, and last frame. But if you want, you can also render a custom frame as a test frame. But in my case, it's okay to uh, render the first, mid, and last frame. So now I can click on submit to render and it will start the rendering for the test frame. So now you can see it will automatically switch to the last step, which is the rendering. And now you can see that everything is submitting to the farm. And here, if you tick on that, you can see that we have the four different redshift drops and it will start the rendering for the test frames. So you can see for now it will running three frames per drops because this is the test frames. And if everything is correct for the different test frame, you can just send everything to the farms. So now you can see the different test frames are done. And to check if everything is correct, you can click on the different scenes. And here you have the different test frame on the top. So you can click on that and here you have a little preview. So maybe the color is not correct because we don't have OCIO on this little preview. If you want to check if everything is correct, including colors and so on, you can click on the different frames and you can click on download. In that case, it will download only these three, these three frames and you can check if everything is correct before sending everything to the farm. So in my case, I know everything is good, but on this format for these scenes, I have very, very strong depth of field. So you can see on these frames. So I need to decrease it just a bit and I will update, update these scenes a bit later. So for now, I will send only these two first formats for the entire sequence. So I can tick the different uh, ROPs I need to send to the entire sequence. And when it's done, you can click on render full job. So I will update these two formats later. So click on that and we will see after the rendering process. And now you can see it will render 100 frame at the same time, which is very, very fast. So maybe in five or 10 minutes, we will get the results for the first two cameras. So now the render is done. So we can select the first camera and the second camera. We can click on download. And here we can select the folder where you want to, to download your different frames. So in my case, I will save it here or maybe I can create a render subfolder. So I can click on that and create a render folder. So I can dive inside and here I can click on select folder. So that's pretty much it. The render is done and now we can take the different frames and you can see it's very, very fast and very easy to use. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to try the farm for free, you can just create an account with a link in the descriptions. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.